Welcome back to uh, Got Wire. Today I have this Hitron, just a generic brand that I found on Amazon, uh, 2.5 gig Mocha adapters. And Mocha lets you convert Ethernet to coax. So if you don't have any Ethernet runs in your house, or if you can't run any, like if you rent or if you're in an apartment and you have coax, you can use two of these, one by your router and one by your device, and it'll run internet over the coax. So I'm gonna get this unboxed here and I'll show you what they look like. So in the box, you get two of these Mocha adapters. It has ethernet, 2.5 gig, and the coax. And then, like I said, you get another one. You get the power adapters to power it, and then you get short little coax jumpers to run from your wall plate to your Mocha adapter. And you also get two ethernet cables to run from your router to your Mocha adapter, and then your device to your Mocha adapter. So I'm gonna get these plugged up here, just laying here on my table. Well, this kind of looks like a mess here, but this Mocha adapter here on my right, it has my internet connection coming in. It converts it to coax and it runs over to this one here. And this one here with this cable runs to my laptop. So it converts your ethernet to coax and then back to ethernet. So this is how you hook up these Mocha adapters. This is basically what you have on your wall in any apartment or house. The only thing that's missing here is the faceplate. This is the back of the faceplate and this is the front of the faceplate where you stick the coax that it came with or a coax. And all that is in the faceplate is what's called a barrel. It disconnects the two together, it just screws them together. Now normally when people have problems hooking these up is, on the back side of the faceplate, this coax here isn't hooked up. Either that or it's put on by the electrician and it's put on so bad that it's all frayed and this end is just junk. So if you plug these up and they don't work, take those two screws off the faceplate, pull it off, and see if this is connected or if it's bad, you know, because sometimes you can just take it and pull that end right off. And if it's bad, they make kits at Lowe's you can buy where you can put new ends on. Now I'm using these coax identifiers as a number and then you plug it on to the end of the coax. And this one, since I don't have faceplate, I'm just using this barrel here to put it on. Now you might just get lucky and plug these up and they'll automatically connect. There's two lights, a green and a blue. Green is uh, connected but it's not fast and blue is the full 2.5 gigabit per second so i'm gonna get this plugged up here and i'll show you outside in the coax box how i'm gonna find the two cables to connect them together so outside here on any house or apartment normally you're gonna find a coax box like this it's a big square box it will either say spectrum at&t uh, this is an at&t one comcast xfinity whoever your cable provider is it'll have that logo now mine on the side here is just held in with a screw sometimes they'll put their stupid locks on it if they put their stupid locks on it i'll link down in the description uh, a tool you can use to remove their lock but i'm gonna use a seven or three h drive uh, i call this a can wrench to open up my box here and as you can see, there's a mess of cables in here. I ran a bunch of coax and I have them all labeled with tags. So technically I don't need this identifier. Yours, you probably won't have as much coax on yours. Um, but me, I ran all my own. Your identifier is from Fluke Networks. So I'll link it down in the description. You just take this here. And once you plug up the coax to the back, it'll have a number, turn it on. And then you just take one of these barrels, put it in here and then you screw the coax on. Now I already found these two coaxes. They're here in the bottom of my box. I don't know if you can see that, but it has a number eight on it. So that's how I know that is the one that leads upstairs. The other one, um, if I do the same thing, it'll say two. So in order to get these Mocha adapters to work, all you have to do is link these two coaxes together. And that makes one big long connection from one room to the other. Now normally, um, you shouldn't have to do this because everything is already hooked up with a splitter if you've ever had cable TV service before. Like me, I had DirecTV before, so this is an eight port, all eight coaxes were connected. And if the splitter does Mocha, which most of them do nowadays, um, whatever one you have connected, it'll just connect through the splitter. So that's why people get lucky when they hook these up. They just plug them up and they work. That's because the splitter's sitting out in the coax box and both those coaxes are connected but if you're unlucky and they don't work you have to come out here and figure out what two coaxes lead 
to your two different rooms and you connect them together with, like I said, a little barrel here. So I'm out here in my garage. I got my Mocha adapter hooked up to my jack and I got my laptop out here and I'll show you what it looks like. There's my jack. Yes, I know I have two ethernet ports there I can use. I'm just doing this to demonstrate how to hook it up. And like I said, if it doesn't connect, take off those two screws, look behind that faceplate and see if it's hooked up. But here's my identifier I had on it. You just screw the coax in. This goes to my laptop here. And this right here is your lights. And that green means 2.5 to my laptop. And that blue means the fast connection to the other Mocha adapter right there. And as you can see, I have internet access on my laptop. And I'll show you the other end, how you hook up the other end here in a minute. And here's the other end. Like I said, on this here, uh, blue means it's linked at 2.5 gigabits per second. So you just hook up your coax, hook up your ethernet. Um, this is a 2.5 gig switch. So if you get these, the 2.5 gig model, just make sure your switch can do 2.5 gig. And like I said, I labeled mine. I'll link these tags down in the description for you guys if you wanna label yours. But yours probably won't be labeled. So this identifier here, like I said, I'll make sure to link that down in the description. And it's just that easy to get ethernet over coax. Well, I'll get my laptop all hooked up through these Mocha adapters. And as you can see here, they're connected at 2.5 gig. So this right here is speedtest.net. to test my internet speed through my internet provider, AT&T. I have one gig down, I'm one gig up. This one right here, this 10.4.4, I'm connected through WireGuard to my server and my offsite location, so I'll see how fast that is. And then this one here, 192.168.4.4 colon 3000 is to my local Unraid machine, so we'll see how fast that is. I guess first we'll do the AT&T speed test here, or speedtest.net, and see how quick this is. All right, they got done. I got 743 down and 156 up. I do have WireGuard VPN turned on, so I'm sure that's affecting the speeds right there. Uh, we will try here on my local network to my Unraid machine. So we'll see how quick it is going to a local device. And as you can see, I'm getting about 2300 megabits per second down and almost a gigabit per second up. I'm not sure why the upload speed is so different, but that's what you get when you use adapters like this and you know you can't always predict everything it's always on a very no matter what and this right here is a speed test to my remote server off-site and i'm limited by my gigabit internet connection so i have a gigabit internet connection in the data center and then i have a gigabit internet connection here at my house and as you can see i'm getting 923 download and 242 upload um, I'm connected through WireGuard, so I'm sure that's introducing some variables there. So all in all, I really like these Mocha adapters, especially the 2 gig and 2.5 gig ones like how I have here, especially if you're in an apartment or a rental, someplace you can't run Ethernet and you have coax. These work really well. You just gotta make sure they're hooked up outside like how I showed you earlier in the video. And I would much rather be hardwired than use Wi-Fi any day. But I hope you guys liked the video. Go ahead and like and subscribe. Like I said, I'm trying to get to a thousand subscribers. So if you're not subscribed, go ahead and go down there and click that subscribe button. And hey, leave me a comment. Tell me what I did good, what I did bad. And I'll see you guys in the next one.